Let us pray. Our God, our creator, sustainer, and giver of all things, we want to thank you for this day. We want to thank you for the very life that we have as we have come to read and to open your word. May the Spirit guide us and that in all that we do, may we always honor and glorify our God. And we pray all these in Jesus' name. Amen. Greetings in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I want to welcome all the regular members of the Mike Town District from Somerset, from Greenville, from Kendall, from Grove Place and Mike Town, and all the friends, well-wishers, and everyone who is faithfully attending our online program. Welcome, and welcome in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. As we know that this week, this month, November 2022, we have the week of prayer readings throughout the Adventist world. We are reading every day. Today, I am honored to present this reading in first person. And the one who has authored is no stranger to me personally because he was my senior when we studied together. Pastor Joel Okindo from Kenya. He is indeed at the moment an administrative assistant to the president, assistant rather to the president of the East Central African Division of the Seventh-day Adventist Church and he lives near Nairobi, Kenya. And if Pastor Joel is watching, you will remember the time that we spent at Spicer. Though he was my senior, we were good friends. Abariako, Muzuri, and that's a little bit of Swahili for those of you who are watching this. And I'm going to read for today's, Tuesday's reading. Living as a disciple. Living as a disciple. Your knowledge of God cannot be private. It has to bless others. We have been called to live as Christ's disciples at home, work, school, in the marketplace, and beyond. He is the light of the world, John 1.4. If he lives in you, it will be evident to those around you. Your knowledge of God cannot be hidden. It cannot be private known between you and God alone. It has to bless others like their master. The followers of Christ in every age were to be the light of the world. Pastor Joy Lokindo says, some time ago he attended a funeral of an elder in Kenya and his wife and teenage children testified about his life in a manner that touched every mourner. At our wedding, she said, or she said, I believe, he vowed to love me and he genuinely loved me until his death. The children affirmed this as true. As a Christian church elder, he truly exemplified the love of God to his spouse and children. This is a living Example, or this is a uh, this is living as a disciple. Disciples defined in common English, a disciple is a person or a personal follower of a teacher. In Hebrew, a disciple is one who actively imitates both the teaching and the life of the master. One who applies what has been learned. The big question for a follower of Christ is, what would Jesus do if he were in my situation? Then that is what I must do. Philippians chapter 3 verses 10 and 11. 
it is always a challenge to live what you claim to be. People around you want confirmation that you are genuine. The Bible is full of examples of people who lived as genuine disciples of Jesus Christ. They imitated both his teaching and life. Paul encouraged the believers in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 1, Be ye followers of me, even as I also I am of Christ. Joshua declared before all the leaders of Israel, in the book of Joshua chapter 24, verse 15, But if serving the Lord seems undesirable to you, then choose for yourself this day whom you will serve, whether the gods your ancestors served beyond the Euphrates or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you are living. But as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. A biblical directive. Scripture calls spouses to live as genuine disciples at home. Husbands, in the book of Isaiah, uh, Ephesians chapter 5, verses 25 through 30, Ephesians 5, 25 through 30, Husbands, love your wives just as Christ loved the church and gave himself, give, gave himself up for her. Husbands are to love their wives as their own bodies. He who loves his wife loves himself. After all, no one ever hated their own body, but they feed and care for their body, just as Christ does the church. For we are members of his body. In 1 Peter chapter 3, verses 1 and 2, Wives, in the same way, submit yourselves to your own husbands, so that if any of them do not believe the word, they may be won over with, without words by the behavior of their wives. When they see the purity and reverence of your lives. Ephesians chapter 6 verse 4. If you are a parent, your discipleship is revealed in the way you interact with your children. Fathers or parents, do not exasperate your children. Instead, bring them up in the training and instruction of the Lord. As a child, living as a disciple requires that you obey your parents. Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor your father and mother, which is the first commandment with a promise, so that it may go well with you and that you may enjoy life, long life on the earth. In 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 12, Paul admonished the youth to confirm their discipleship through their characters. Do not let down look, do not let anyone look down on you because you are young, but set an example for the believers in speech, in conduct, in, in love, in faith, and in purity. In 1 Peter chapter 5, verses 1 through 4, the apostle Paul uh, Peter challenged pastors and church leaders to live as genuine disciples. To the elders among you, I appeal as a fellow elder, be shepherds of God's flock that is under your care, watching over them, not because you must, but because you are willing as God wants you to be. Not pursuing dishonest gain, but eager to serve, not lauding it over those entrusted to you, but be examples to the flock. And when the chief shepherd appears, you will receive the crown of glory that will never fade away. A critical need. Living as a genuine disciple is critical. 
in these days or in these last days, the devil and his angels are working tirelessly to keep believers comfortable in a lukewarm state. There will be terrible times in the last days. People will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boastful, proud, abusive, disobedient to their parents, ungrateful, unholy, having a form of godliness, but denying its power, having had nothing to do with such people. Second Timothy, that was from Second Timothy chapter 3, verses 1 through 5. Like Paul, in the book of Philippians chapter 3, verses 10 through 14. Philippians chapter 3, verses 10 through 14. Like Paul, let your consuming desire be to know Christ and be like him. I want to know, as Paul says, I want to know Christ. Yes, to know the power of his resurrection and participation in his sufferings. Because like him in his death, and so, somehow, attaining to the resurrection from the dead, not that I have already obtained all this or have already arrived at my goal, but I press on to take hold of that for which Christ Jesus took hold of me. Brothers and sisters, I do not consider myself yet to have taken hold of it. But one thing I do, Paul says, forgetting what is behind and straining toward what is ahead, I press on toward the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. Let us pray. Father God, help us to be the true disciple to be the follower, to deny ourselves and look forward for that eternal home. And as we pursue that eternal home, may we be able to behold Jesus and become like Jesus. And that we will be able to behold Jesus through the power of the Holy Spirit, that people will be able to see in us a true disciple who has denied self and everything around and has looked forward for that eternal home where we will live together throughout eternity. Thank you for these readings. Thank you for the brothers and sisters, wonderful people around. Thank you for the blessings of life. We commit each and every one into your care and keeping. Bless us. Keep us safe. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. And God bless.